Welcome. Today's lesson is on tomato varieties. Today what I'm going to try to do is try to explain just very briefly what some of the more popular varieties are uh, in the uh, a commercial as well as the fresh uh, market of tomatoes. Uh, one of the first ones I want to talk about is slicing and global tomatoes. Uh, they tend to be more rounded, obviously kind of reddish, um, and, and these are slicing or global types. These are the ones that a lot of us will buy at the grocery store. Also, they're, they're also used in the food industry. And we'll talk about them a little bit uh, more in just a second. The second type are beefsteaks, are much larger. They're more rectangular than anything else, and they're used for slicing that you would use, for instance, in sandwiches. The next one I'd like to talk about are plum tomatoes. They're relatively new to the marketplace. They've been primarily bred to have higher solids, thicker skin. And you're gonna see these in tomato pastes and tomato sauces. They're not terribly flavorful, uh, but they kind of stick together and, and spread out more evenly, in particular in pastes, in pizzas, and, and in various pasta dishes. And our fourth type today is one that we've all enjoyed in the summertime, and that's cherry tomatoes. Uh, cherry tomatoes are the smaller variety. They come in a variety of different colors. They tend to be more flavorful and have is a more sugar content in it as well. You can see it in salads in particular. You don't have to slice them or anything else. Uh, these particular ones are really noted for their sweetness, and later in the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about blocks and what, what those blocks mean. The last type of tomato I'd like to introduce you to is the grape tomato. It's a variation of the plum tomato, although smaller. Very much like a, a cherry tomato. Um, and the bot is sweet, but during this next phase of the lesson, what I'm going to be doing is I want to talk about a particular variety that owns about 90% of the market share in California when we talk about fresh uh, market uh, tomatoes. It's called the Quality 21, 23, or 27. Each one of those numbers represent a specific variety within the variety um, that usually has to do with disease resistance or maybe where it might be uh, planted or grown in, in certain parts of the West. Now, this is what it looks like. It's round, it's heavy, and it really is a great deep red color. Everything you'd think you'd want in, in a tomato, but one little catch. It was designed primarily to be picked green and then gassed with ethylene to help along the, the ripening process. Why would you want to do that? Well, it helps control the ripeness. So you can help control the shelf life. And, and if it has to be packed in certain uh, time and then shipped somewhere else, then they can basically turn on and turn off the ripening process. So from a, from a shipping and commercial point of view, it makes sense to be able to control that. And ethylene gas allows us to do this. We're, we're, I have a picture up there of a packing shed that was sorting and cleaning those, those green tomatoes. They're going to be shipped probably somewhere else or maybe stay there to be gassed for a particular market. So it reached its, its peak of color and condition by the time it reaches the market. Now flavor, that's a whole nother story. And I'll get to that near the end of, of the lesson because it, it, it does impact um, uh, the, how, what, what kind of flavor we get here. Now, let's take a look at some of the other slicing varieties. Now, Ace Tomato has been around a lot of years. It used to own the marketplace. So it's a 50 plus year old variety. Not so good on disease resistance. That's one of the reasons it's been replaced. But still, if you're growing them in the backyard, they're a medium sized uh, variety and uh, they, they're they pretty decent producers. Uh, not terrific, uh, but I think you'll find uh, some Ace Tomato uh, improved varieties around. The next one is a celebrity. Uh, the, the celebrity type is kind of a modern heirloom. Um, and it's, again, uh, going to primarily grow in the backyard. It's a determinate one as well. And the actual scientific name actually means wolf peach. And the reason they call it that is because if I could hold it up and show you, it kind of shaped like a peach. But this is a pretty good a yielding pretty fair disease resistant variety and one that you'll see quite a bit probably in the seed catalogs. Now, the one that I personally like a lot is the early girl uh, because it is um, a medium-sized one. Again, 
It produces extremely, extremely well, and the flavor is to die for. It's extremely sweet, and it's an indeterminate, which means it produces a lot of tomatoes for a lot of time. And uh, the early girls, some people kind of joke that they grow it dry land because it doesn't need a whole lot of water. And if you grow it in the spring, you'll get it all spring and then early summer and continue it if uh, you actually introduce it with some, some water. So early girl is a, also a very pro, po, a popular variety. And then when we get to, the, to Roma our, um, types, these are the ones that you'll find in uh, s some kind of pastas and salsas in particular. So uh, they've been bred to have thicker skin, more solids uh, to them. Um, so they have a little bit uh, more body to it. So those are some of the other varieties that are out there that you may be familiar with. Now, flavor. Flavor comes uh, basically from some flavor compounds that, that are stored in leaves. And uh, that's pretty, deter pretty much determined by the kind of tomato that you're going to be growing. They're basically, there are three types, uh, determinate, or excuse me, indeterminate, semi-indeterminate, and, and determinate. But really, I'm going to talk about indeterminate and terminate. Indeterminate tomatoes, at their end, at their, their meristem, or, or their um, uh, buds at the end, they, they're going to continue to grow. There is no gene to turn them off in terms of growing. So they'll just grow and grow and grow. And you'll have throughout the entire year or, or uh, seasons that, that they're alive, they just continue to produce. Uh, you, can, um, you can definitely uh, prune them uh, to fit on steaks and trestles and a variety of other things, and they'll produce. Like, for instance, cherry tomatoes are a great example of an interment. They grow on vines, and you'll just get them all season long as long as it's warm enough. The determinate ones are called bush uh, tomatoes, and uh, they typically will stop at a certain... There's a gene that says, all right, everybody stop. At the terminal buds, you're stopping. Ladder buds, you're going to stop. That's it. That's all we're going to get. And then all of the, the, the fruit pretty much ripens in about one to three, one to four weeks. It's it's going to going to give it all, all of it's got in a short time. And you don't want to prune it because you obviously want to do that. Now... What does it have to do with flavor? Flavor is actually in the leaves. It's produced in the leaves and passed on to the fruit. So the more leaves you have, um, the more sugars you're going to have. And we call those blocks. So vine tomatoes tend to have anywhere from about 7 to 10% blocks. And those blocks represent blocks of sugar. So if it's a, like a 9 or 10% block, that means it's fairly, fairly sweet. Determinant tomatoes tend to have four, five, maybe six blocks, or excuse me, six percent blocks. So four to six percent blocks. So it's not quite as flavorful. They may be juicy, but there isn't sometimes flavor. So obviously what I like to see from tomatoes is, is a certain flavor, certain texture, those kind of things. I hope this has helped you. Our thought of the day is brought to us by John C. Maxwell. The secret of your success is determined by your daily agenda. Well, you know, if we were tomato plants and you were indeterminate kind of a plant, what would you do? You'd take your resources and use every second, every minute of the day to build those resources and store them in the leaves. And then what you do is you, you build your, your fruit, which is your future, and that future is sweet. Think about that. We'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.